think they debuted. We're rolling. Maybe they did. Okay. So, yeah. So, it was uh, May 31st. Not always. Oh, 1985. 1985, January, okay. March, April, May. So that's still great early. You put the years on there. Yeah, you know what? Nobody else, nobody, nobody else doing else flyers did. put years on. Yeah. It. So yeah. You either check my date uh, after my name, or or the flyer was actually had the date on. So yeah, it was uh, the debut of 5150 FSP and A Wall. So Paul Summers from A Wall was working at a. Oh damn, I forget the casino he worked at a hotel casino down on the strip. Uh, Paul Summers. Yeah, Paul, Paul Summers. Summers. Yeah. And uh, so when he would, cl- I, I, I guess when they clean out the rooms, the champagne that didn't get drank got stored in boxes and unopened. He, <laughs> unopened. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. he had <laughs> boxes and boxes of unopened champagne. Wow. So the idea when I, when I talked to Paul, you know, because I wanted AWOL to play, I wanted to play with AWOL every goddamn time, man. Yeah, uh-huh. FSP, we opened for them about a million times at least. Uh-huh. So uh, he goes, yeah, man, I, I, got, I got this. I, I know what we can do. I have champagne. Lots of it. So <laughs> the champagne jam, jam was oh, created. Nice. Yeah. God. Yeah. Now, who was and in AWOL again? Story. Oh, my God. Anthony Hudak, Paul Summers, and uh, who was it? Was it Guy? Uh, Guy Grebel, yeah. But it was and uh, and Andy, oh the singer Andy Zafudo, mm-hmm. great band man, fucking oh, incredible man. So that was that, that was that was the first desert show uh, for the did Las Vegas I, hardcore I, scene that I put on that yeah, you had put on. First fun. That's yeah. probably the first punk show that we first had. First hardcore yeah. punk show, yeah. yeah. Everything else was rock and roll or the glam stuff. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Prior to that, and that was on Ann Road, right there. Oh, you smiling? Yeah. Follow the dirt road. About two miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from, from Jones. Yeah, from Jones. Jones. Well, Holy yeah, shit. Decatur intersected it, so you had to go past Decatur. But there's more to the story. Danny, tell the tell about the fire. No, <laughs> <laughs> so this wasn't the Champagne Jams. So we did like, I don't know, maybe uh, four shows, four other shows there. They were all local. No, you know, no out of town bands. And then uh, I get a call from this band. Oh, I'd already done No Effects. Yeah, I'd already done No Effects, and No Effects called. Well, hey, we're on a tour, man. Can you can you help us out? I go, hey, man, I got a place out in the desert. I, you know, I've been doing. <laughs> he goes, fantastic. So they show up, and uh, I don't know who else was on the bill. Uh, no Effects, probably FSP. Somebody else was going to open. I don't. Oh, know. Oh, I got to look for that flyer. Yeah, I'm, pro- I'm sure to have it. Anyway, uh, Rob Asshole Johnson had an old Vega. He bring his Vega breaks down at some point at the, on on Ann Road on the road, so instead of just pushing it off the road, he decides to set his car on fire, <laughs> right there, right where we're having the gig. Um, I don't even think I think like how one far band, away? like twenty like, feet from where the band's playing. No shit, <laughs> on the road. Uh, uh, the one way to get out. The one way. Well, yeah. Anyway, so the, there's this fire, raging car fire going on. I think one of the local bands may have started, but anyway, all of a sudden somebody's tapping me on the shoulder. Look, look, I'm going, what? I look up and road and there is a line of just maybe 40 vehicles with lights flashing and following them is a helicopter. So, <laughs> holy shit. Everybody throw your beers down, throw your beers down. Get in! 
Okay, so it's North Las Vegas Police, Metropolitan Police Department, BLM, Forest Service, and one other, some other three initial thing. I don't recall who it was. All show up, surround the party. They, uh, the fire department puts the fire out. I mean, it's a big deal. They got the helicopter. It's like, what the fuck are you kids doing out here? What is this? Is this some kind of satanic thing? <laughs> We're out, just a bunch of punkers. I mean, yeah. So they're they're like laughing about it. You guys are crazy. What? So they, 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 they get their vehicles all parked away from the thing, and they're parked like in this line where they have the lights all shining on the burning vehicle. There's a line of all these official state vehicles. Um, uh, no effects. goes, hey, let's get the cops to take a photo with this. It's on the back of one of their Colossal Wassel 45s, that photo. Wow. With all the cop cars, us, and no effects. Yeah. Crazy. This yeah, was no effects' first desert show. The, they had played no, previously. No, they played though. previously at a where, at a, yeah. uh, the VF, uh, the VFW? thing on Va- Vandermeer. Oh, the, mm-hmm. wow, the VFW. Yeah, the VFW, VFW Hall. So this was my second time bringing them in. Didn't wow. Happen. So I'd, after that, I brought them many times. But yeah, That yeah. was one of their early shows. And yeah, they played the desert like three times, I think. Low C. They, they, they played her so often. I thought they were a local band when I was coming up. <laughs> they, and then they got big. And every, I was like, I, Every tour what? they did from 85 to 89, I believe, was a Vegas stop. Uh-huh. And I pretty much put most of those on except for their later ones. Oh, you didn't do the the one. The last at one the I did was the spa. That was the last one. Yeah, you were on. doing After all the that, shows at the spa, right? No, I me. Mean, I mean, it was a combination of people. But uh, I always okay. did a couple of big ones there. Yeah. How many shows was this in when this fire thing happened? This was probably the start like, of this or? at Ann Road. Probably yeah. about six, six shows, shows that occurred at, there. That was the last show at Ann Road. Uh-huh. Then I then I went back to Losi and I checked Losi. So what had been the construction parking? was now just a beautiful flat thing with a bunch of hills of dirt in front of the big basin. Uh-huh. The the four, three wall tubes was built, but there was no road to get to it yet. Uh-huh. They, they hadn't they hadn't built the road further down to get to that part. It was just it was just a drainage ditch. I was wondering about so, that. Yeah, because yeah, so I whole, had been to some shows prior to that before the the, the uh, Right. The tubes, the or tubes, whatever right. it's called. That was, yeah, Losey Road was originally. So then uh, Jesse kind of didn't want to do it anymore, so I just kind of took it on and just did the shows at Losey on that pay, in that uh, parking lot area. Mm-hmm. And that was like probably 50 feet from the road, if that. You just yeah, pulled yeah. right there. And, but there's nobody out there, and you can yeah. always see people driving from miles away. Up for Losey. Is this the first Losey show? No, there were no. no shows prior to that. Really? Yeah. What year is that? This is 86. Okay, yeah. There have been shows at Los there prior to that. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, Corrosion and Conformity who actually played out there. Yeah, it was actually scheduled at a VFW. And what happened oh. was about a billion people called the VFW. And the VFW freaked out, canceled the show that day. Gene called me and goes, man, can you help me? I go, well, let's do it. We put, I drew that flyer up that afternoon or that morning. Pull that flyer up right now, the directions. Yeah. Let me get it right for the desert show. For the desert show, yeah. I mean, it was uh, last at the very last minute, man. And people got it. Yeah, this flyer was given. I we we ran it. I mean, me and Gene ran it to every place we could that we knew. I think that morning it was brought to schools at lunchtime. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Bonanza. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we went. We had people taking it out everywhere. So we had the directions to the VF from the VFW because we were handing this out also at the VFW. A bunch of the Motorhead chicks stayed at the VFW to hand it out uh-huh. to make sure. So that show was very well attended for being like just a seat of the pants, right? Yeah, it was fucking cold as fuck. Yeah, what, oh, year, really? what month is oh, it? Oh, yeah, it's January 24th. Yeah, right. um, and then I, I, for me, because this is, Greg had already been part of the scene for a while. And so for the rest of us, like me and Jason and our drummer Richard, we, didn't, we were new. We were like, what is this? I mean, we had gone to the shows. We seen the Grimm and AWOL and Descendants. That was another story. But then this happened. They're like, oh, this is new? Like, desert parties? Like, let's go to these. So we go to this. My sister drives us out. She had a brand new Isuzu <laughs> Impulse. And she's only two days old. And we're like, I go, can you drop us off at this party? And so she drove us all the way to low scene. And that road early it was, was fucking pretty rough. tough. It was a yeah. rough road. Yeah. Up. She was Before it became... you take? It was rough. It was horrible. And then also we see a little light, one light. 
there it is. Yeah, literally. She dropped us off. So, yeah, I don't even know how we got home that night. Remember the early shows? I had all that police tape. So when I lived over on Craig Road, I had the, we lived downstairs. The lady above me got murdered, man. Some oh, dude, Jesus. some rando she brought home with her fucking killed her with a hammer, man. So my the, the cops, the Northtown cops, surrounded our entire complex with the police tape, and they left the fucking rolls of police tape there. So I had police tape for like, I don't know, two years. <laughs> and every one of those, remember, every one of those I shows have, had I the have, police tape around. I them. have, I can't, that's where it came from. That's so crazy. I have pieces of that tape. So yeah, same, yeah. To this day. So, so just so people wouldn't walk behind the bands, which yeah, it never it worked. worked. But mm-hmm. there was police tape, so you couldn't get behind the bands. At the yeah, show. it was heavy, but you, when you saw that. But the other thing is with this show is that uh, COC was driving this fucking tour van that, that was, was all spray so painted. People and were drunk. Every band that they played with signed it. It was and really cool. Yeah. And then they come out, Mike Dean with these fucking dreadlocks, and actually fucking uh, the drummer so too. Sick, yeah. Yeah, and they. Mm, they Woody. It was crazy. Fifty one fifty. It was only two, right? Did you, I don't remember, you guys. You guys played. Mm, I, don't I don't think you guys think played. We did. It was Something just, happened that night. We couldn't. Yeah, it was just fifty one fifty. Yeah, but we that, were supposed to, but we couldn't. What was a pill? There was a guy pill that used to hang out with fifty one fifty, and I remember it was so fucking cold that he was slamming, and we were just little kids, you know, in flannels. And he fucking smashed my foot with oh the my heel, God. and I never felt it because everybody was frozen. So cold. <laughs> So oh, Mike uh, Dean had an had a ongoing cold, but that night he caught a full-on flu. So they were like, uh, there, something happened with their vehicle, so we had to work on their vehicle. Um, the 5150 dudes fixed their vehicle. But uh, Mike and uh, Woody ended up staying on my pad. Woody bailed to go stay somewhere else, and we lost, uh, what was the drummer's, the kid's the drummer? Uh, Reed, 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 Reed the, I guess the Motorhead girls grabbed Reed because he was so fucking hey, cute, hey, and they kidnapped him. He was gone for the entire time. Mike had no clue where any of his band was. He stayed at my house. He got, got him better. He felt, felt a lot better, and then we had to track down. But it was like a week. Oh, they were in town for a whole week. Yeah. Wow. Because it was after their L.A. thing, and they had no more shows, so they were like trying to reset. So he was on the phone constantly. Wow. Trying to reset up the, the next uh-huh. to go back home to Rally. Rally. Holy uh, shit. Rally? Rally, North Carolina. Where and, they and in my opinion, the only version of Corrosion Conformity. That was the best. That really I mean, meant, truly, meant man. Anything. They were so fuck. And yeah. to this day, man, I can talk to Mike Dean. He goes, man, I never got the dirt out of my amps or my fucking guitar, <laughs> my bass. <laughs> Because yeah. there was so much dirt. Because by then, the 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 uh, Ann Road site, it could, we I think just after that we went to the 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 cement the tubes. But by then it was just so pitted out. And do you? Oh my God! That brings me to the Fourth of July bottle rocket death bottle and destruction. Rocket yeah, that was. Yeah. Uh, that oh was shit! Later I gotta on hear about in the that. summer, I think this this would have been the last of those shows there. In no, the no, dirt. this is the no. We do we I went to a lot of shows here after this. Oh, uh, in the dirt. In, in this the, dirt spot okay, before okay. we went to the tubes. Okay, all right. Because so. we, we, the, we the, the thing is, is that in the punk scene, since you like metamorphosize so fast that you're all of a sudden, you're a poser and all of a sudden you're like you're a, a real you're punk. A band. <laughs> and then, I'll, dude, I was going to shows when I was in the carpet over there. <laughs> like, who, who called it the tubes, man? That's fucked up. <laughs> like, how can we have shows over there anymore? Right. But that's what it was. It was, it was all these different things. But the Losi shows on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> because there's just a piece of yeah. fucking ranch, ranchy ass carpet that was out there. These were great, but this was the start. But then after th- this was like, if it was kind of like a like a training. Like if you can make it through this show, you're gonna make it through any oh, show. Because yeah, yeah, it was yeah, so fucking real. cold. People were like next to each other. They had People fires were just going. That's that's I think burning every anything they could. Yeah, everything tires too. People burning tires like because oh, there was there was still the wood left over from when they had built the uh, tubes. The you know the the framing for the. Uh-huh. The, all the cement, so there was a lot of wood out there, and people had like st- I remember there were like stacks yeah. of like big fires going on. But what, one of the the I mean there was there were so many great shows at the Low Sea, uh, the original Low Sea site. That uh, but one of the greatest ones was Bergie Fest two, because there had been a Bergie Fest one which was at Johnny's house, the Apollo house, yeah. yeah, which was incredible. It was like there was sweat coming down the walls, <laughs> and that was like in January or something like that. Yeah. And that was the debut of PWT too. Oh yeah, yeah. Which be, yeah, we that became was our very, that very was our our brother band, like yeah, PWT uh, and Schizo. We were like our homies, because we debuted the next month. But um, <laughs> at, at, out here we yeah. did, but at, uh, it was sucking cold. We de- Who'd you debut with? Uh, you that? set us up with the asexuals. Oh, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> the asexuals. 
Dude, there we brought a lot of good. Sh- I brought a lot of good bands. Yeah, people know. people used to get mad at, at Danny because he would give schizoid. I mean, we were the opening band. We weren't in the main <laughs> band because usually it was him or Fifty One Fifty. Um, but they, we were the opening band. People, get, how come, how come they, they oh, we get the, the good shows? Like, the dictator. yeah, yeah, they they call him the dictator. But we were like, we didn't give a shit. We're like, oh my god, we're gonna open up for Doggy Style. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the Instigators. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot. What yeah, I mean, like rad ass shows. Like, and that, the only one I'm gonna make, bring this up because we were talking about the other day. We were so bummed because um, we wanted to play with the Descendants at the VFW Hall. <sighs> But Sorry, it was bro. the thing is, is that was uh, Sean, you and Sean had gone together to play yeah, that show. Sean and Pablo, yeah. So they're like, oh, OK, they got first is we're like, we want to play wanted VA to play. Oh, damn. That's VA open down. Yeah, Ooh, I remember that, which was very all. no, no. And people are just like walking away. Yeah, it was just, sad yeah. because Paul was looking as he was experimenting with different stuff. And he was older than Paul, us. Paul Summers. Paul, no, no, no. Paul, uh, Paul Pablo, Pablo Schwartz from MIA. Paul Schwartz. Oh, okay, he moved yeah. back to from uh, from. California, Costa Mesa, yeah. wherever they lived, yeah. where I might live. So he came back to a new MI. scene. It wasn't a punk scene anymore, yeah. and he was a different guy. So yeah. yeah, that show he had moved on and was doing other stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yep, exactly. So VA, yeah, yeah, that was a good show though. Yeah, but the desert shows at Losi are just incredible. I mean, there were so many shows. Effigies, yeah. God, man. Effigies from Chicago. Yeah, we were just like, what well, the life sentence from Chicago. Remember that? So were yeah. these like a like a slow burn? Was it? It started and it was not very started, many people. It started, yeah. It was it was it was East Side guys mostly, and then you know the West Side kids would show come yeah, out because yeah. they'd Chaparral, heard about the parties. Vegas Valley yeah. High School. Yeah, it, it was it was mostly high schools. That was my best marketing ploy. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe put a stack of flyers at the record exchange, or, you know, but getting into high school kids, I'd give you know. Give Greg and, and Checo a bunch of flyers, and they take them to school. Give so and so a bunch of flyers. You know, I have a little route that I have to give kids flyers, and they take them to their school. His original street team, the, yeah. the street team, right? Street team, <laughs> street, yeah, right. Street team, beef eater. Ah, uh, damn, I miss this show. I'm so pissed. Oh man, and then offspring. This photo, uh, there's a story that Danny told me a long time ago that when he was riding out there. He saw a bag and he decided to kick it. <laughs> no, no, but it, it looked like a ball. It, it looked like, like a ball. So he's jamming on his motorcycle and he decides to kick it, but it's a bag full of cement. Oh. <laughs> while he's driving, while he's riding. Yeah, the he's jamming, yeah. punk. I had good thing I had my boots on my motorcycle. Yeah. Boots. So yeah, so that show, I actually the beef eater. Let's talk about that show really quickly. Beef eater, Offspring, July twenty sixth. Um, I'm not even sure who the local band was that opened. That. I don't think. Well, so. here's the thing, man. The day of the show, Beef Eater shows up. Offspring calls me. They they knew somebody here in Vegas, so they were staying with them. And so I'd been talking to a singer dude. What's his name? Uh, forget Weird his name. name. Anyway, so you know, I, I gave him the directions, you know, word for word, so he knew how to get out there. Beef Eater was staying at Judy's house with me. That day, I went to my storage because I had all my PA. My PA was super big. It was incredibly large. And I had it all in storage, so I had to go take my VW bus, go get my PA. Now, at the time, my VW bus had fake plates on it. I was probably I had a warrant. I was I constantly drove like that forever. It, ridiculous, stupid. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I, I have a, a Cody or Zane. I don't know Judy's little one of Judy's little brothers with me. Probably oh Zane. shit! I, remember I had that Zane guy. or Cody with me, one yeah, of them, yeah. and they were not. They were like fourteen years old, maybe twelve. I don't know. The car, I get pulled over, like, not even around the corner from my, my house, from Judy's house. I get pulled over on Charleston, and we lived right there, right around the corner. Oh, Cops pull me over, and I explained to him, like, oh, man, I, I listen, I have a warrant. I have a warrant. I, I just want to let you know. See, I have all this gear. I'm putting on a big band thing today. Can, and he goes, listen, if it's, if it's under $500, I'm letting you go. <laughs> it was six hundred dollars. He goes, I can't. It's now a. It's now. It's you've your your warrants elevated. I can't do it. So they took me in. They led. I don't know if it was Zane or Cody. I one of them was either twelve or fourteen years old. Drove. I explained to him what to do. Tell Judy what's going on. Tell Judy to call Gene Bagley. All the gear is in this van. Take he. The cops didn't want to. They they knew about the plate. Take the plate off. Told the, the kid, can you drive? Yeah, drive it home. So I'm, I'm ex- <laughs> they, they knew he was underage. It's obvious it's he's a fucking kid. kid. <laughs> uh, can you drive? Yes. It's, so they were being cool. They were being that fucking cool yeah, with yeah. me. 
I explained to him, tell Judy what to do. Judy knows how to put a show on because Judy was yeah. with me the whole time. She knew what desert shows. So Judy called Jean. Jean helped her set that show up. I went to fucking Las Vegas City Jail, spent 24 hours in jail till my warrant was fixed. Oh, so yeah. I, I met Beef Eater that day. I didn't get to meet the guys in Offspring. You know what I mean? They had this, I guess, apparently in a very successful show because Beef Eater, uh, they, they thanked me profusely in fanzines later. Offspring, when I seen them the next time they came to town, I like went up and introduced myself. They go, oh my God, you're the dude. No, it's like so. Yeah, thankfully Judy and Jean saved the day. Damn. Yeah, Judy and Zach or Cody or whoever Zane or Cody whoever drove the fucking bus home. My God. So that's one story, dude. What the fuck? It's like millions of chapters. It's like an encyclopedia of Danny, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? This is like too much. I love it. So these shows were getting just progressively bigger, bigger and bigger. bigger. Like how many how many people do you think on average were showing up to a lot of these shows <laughs> about this time? Eighty six. There was 87. Hundreds of, hundreds of kids at the Low Sea Road, but the yeah. tubes by then it got. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. intense. It was and like, it wasn't just punkers. It was all of a sudden school kids from every school. And if you look at the early pictures of Low Sea Road, nobody's decked. Nobody, yeah, one yeah. it's the only one that's decked. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. looks like they just came off a, a beach somewhere. We talked about that because yeah. nobody had a style. We were like, but it we wasn't. Just, we just dressed like this and yeah. show up at shows. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We yeah. didn't, Vegas didn't have that whole, like, we got to look fucking punk. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave a shit except for yeah, the yeah. West, some of the West Side kids. Yeah, some of, because yeah. they had the money to buy this. Yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't afford fucking bondage pants. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> Well, I've seen some of those old pictures, and I'm surprised how many white T-shirts there are. Yeah, right, right. Like, that does not jeans, exist anymore. Cut off jeans and white T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and white shoes, white tennis shoes. It's insane, because, like, that's just not <laughs> nobody, a style that nobody no, wears no, anymore. I think I own three white T-shirts. That's it. I've seen some of those old pictures, and I'm surprised how many white T-shirts there are. Yeah, right, right. Like, that does not jeans, exist anymore. Cut off jeans and white T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and white shoes, white tennis shoes. It's insane, because like, that's just not nobody, a style that nobody no, wears anymore. No, I think I own three white T-shirts. That's it. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm going to take another little break here. Okay. This is going cool, though, you think? I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how far into the history you want to get. We can progressively advance in the years, talk about other stuff, too. I mean, as long as you want to keep going. Yeah. I, I mean, no, shit. I don't know. It's pretty, I mean, it's fascinating to me. And, like, I'm learning stuff I had no idea There's about. things I didn't want to talk about, like. You're talking about the piss heads, you mean? So let's so talk just about the piss heads. over the stuff we just recorded. That's awesome. <laughs> I checked just to make sure because that scared me for a second. All right? I thought we were. All the stories there. meshed together. I was right. like, what? So um, the piss heads. So uh, FSP is just going crazy. They're on this like intense, like upgoing. Like everybody's like, oh my God. Shows are like, getting bigger for us. Th yeah, they're getting bigger. And then, you know, Danny's booking the show. So he's, of course he's going to book the good shows for his band. You know? <laughs> Dictator. Yeah. And uh, so the thing is, is that all of a sudden, um, I don't know what happens. It seems like FSP is gone for a little bit, like maybe a few months or something like that. I don't know what happens. And all of a sudden, FSP comes back. And it's like intense. We had a whole new set. We it was a on, whole new set. I mean, they, it was a really heavy, like we worked whole on new rocky stuff. More yeah, heavy yeah. Stuff. And then also crowd involvement. And then they, I remember a thing, and I, this is funny because I just found out where this comes from. But they'd always be like, uh, uh, "What's this? Uh, shit! God damn!" Get, get off, off your ass, ass and slam. Yeah, yeah. But it was from Funkadelic. Yeah, I never yeah. knew that. But I was yeah. like, these guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and 
<laughs> and then they had three girls, which was uh, Connie, April. April, and Lynn. And they were their like, backup singer. They wouldn't really do anything. They were just kind of dancing in the background. But it was like this full, like, whoa, this show. is like a full show. Yeah. And we're like, oh, my we, God. They, we actually had little moves worked out with the girls. Yeah. That, that for some oh, yeah. That was oh, dude. We, we was... worked pretty hard, man. Like, I got to say, man, FSP was one of that, those 84. Five to eighty-seven years. Yeah, we rehearsed four, four, five, yeah, six days a week. Six man. days a week. They were intense. It was God. a real band, and we we're just like, I mean, and then the, I think for us, you know, because we always looked up to them, you know, with the artwork, with the with the stuff that they did. Was also was like, when are these guys gonna get signed? <laughs> like, why? How come nobody? Yeah, how come nobody? Nobody has this. Like, my dream would have been to have a split fifty one fifty FSB. Right. Oh wow, yeah. We I just think didn't that, have a recording. That was the only thing that kept us down. Yeah, and they both recorded with Garth with the four track, and he was good. And then Garth moved away, but the he, thing yeah, is, he went to the. Uh, he was in the Air Force. So. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. He was in the Air Force. Yeah. But then I was just like. Man, how come nobody like these guys are the bands? Like, how come nobody accepts it? Because then you'll hear other bands like, dude, our bands are better than yours. Like, you, you guys are still playing we, some bullshit. We, we did the same shows we were doing in Vegas when we play other cities like, like Isla Vista and Santa Barbara, the Red Barn and all that. Dude, it was the same thing. We had a little following in Isla Vista, a little FSP click that, you know, to this day they still yeah. like. Yeah. So it's I think cool. I was like, and I mean, it was always an inspiration because it was like that East Side energy is like, dude, we don't have anything. We're going to make up our own thing and we don't really know what to follow. We're just going to make it up. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like it, we don't, you know, I but the FSB was just fucking tight. They were so fucking good. And then I remember then I think Kevin really started stepping it up. I mean, he was never bad, but even with the leads. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then and then what would happen is that they would have... Um, Besides, besides Waterbed, they had a song called Caucasian Jam, which a lot of people don't know. <laughs> and that was just a, a instrumental because they'd bust in these instrumentals and then Danny would a, come back. Yeah, there was like a whole set. It was, it was really, yeah. it was legit. Mm-hmm. It was like, damn, it's clean. And I'm like, when, these guys should already be touring. These guys should be out doing this stuff. But it was just always this wackiness, which eventually led to them having a matter, you know, a difference of opinions. <laughs> yeah. On stage. Uh, yeah, before we get to that though, um, I was hanging out with my good friend Angelique Stevens. Yeah. And she had mentioned, because I was talking about doing this interview with you, she had mentioned how she really loved FSP because there were shows where the pit would be all girls. Yeah. Do you remember these kind yeah, of shows? Yeah, yeah. And this is partially inspired by the pit sets, I'm assuming. Yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 like, they had their own little following too. The yeah, girls. Yeah. girls the little punk girls love the piss sets. Right? Yeah, and if you were if you knew what was up, you'd hang out with the piss sets. Good sets. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, Connie. The piss sets were cool. Connie, Connie and April Shepard, April Shepard and Lynn and Banks. Lynn Banks. Mm-hmm. They were cooler than we were. I got to be honest. Yeah, they had a cool style. They were unique. Like they were like they were original. And it was remember rad. when they showed up in the, the cocktail dresses at That's Entertainment? Were you, did you go to that one? Uh, yeah, I think I did because. Um, well, you guys headlined that? Did you guys headline that show? I don't recall. Yeah. Don't yeah. No, it was. I was, but they they would choreograph and work together. And then when you didn't see them, it was like, what oh, happened? Piss up. Yeah, like what's up? Because I think Danny actually put them on there too with pissettes on some of the flyers. I don't remember. There was a few. I think I did see that. But I mean, it was that time. Just incredible. So you had the, the, the six song demo. It was six song demo. I right. thought it was, I said five earlier, but um, and then after that was the ten song. Thirteen, demo? thirteen song, which was some later recordings that our sound had gotten heavier. Up. For sure. <laughs> and really, you were getting uh, maybe not as political. Um, it was a little more personal, or, little more or personal. like kind of. Um, I mean, so there's specific songs I did want to ask about. Um, because I actually don't really know what some of the lyrics are. I just had the demo and didn't really right. know what you were saying. But uh, Pride seemed like, a, that was like, like an amazing song. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit of what that song So was? that's a funny one. Uh, that was actually um, <laughs> Kevin making, Kevin LaFontaine uh, digging at me. Dig, making a little dig at me. Oh, no uh, kidding. I've been, yeah. I've been wrong, but either way, I'm loud. I could scream to get results because I'm so fucking proud. When I make mistakes, no one I can, uh, I forget the lyrics, but uh, things that I would say to the band, he like kind of threw it back at me. Like, and he you said, know, take, take pride in what we're doing. It was really important to me that we took pride in what we do. And I would yeah. say it all the time. Take a little pride in what you do. 
And I'd fucking get mad and leave because they were being sloppy or something. I was an asshole. So I, you were kind of running a tight ship back then, I was being huh? a dick. Yeah, yeah. I was a fucking construction worker, roofer. I was burnt. But the, the other thing is, like, Danny had a vision, man. I mean, he had it, you know? I mean, I knew I, what I wanted to do with Vanity. Yeah. Just we never got to where it wanted to be. Anyway. But from what we saw, man, it was... Fucking awesome. Pretty fucking solid. But anyway, that, that song's by Kevin, and, it, and if the, the <laughs> lyrics, it, it's it's throwing a lot of things that I said, and deservedly so, right back into my face. And so, did and he, I love that song. He goes, hey man, I, he goes, don't be mad. When he when he showed me the song, he goes, I, I wrote this about you, and I'm reading it, and I'm going, <laughs> he goes, yeah, I remember you said that. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good song. It's a, yeah, I deserve it. <laughs> Some things that I did bad back in the day that involved Volkswagens and oh yeah, like I remember that. Yeah, I don't think we'll record that. Yeah, we yeah. Don't it wasn't. We don't too, it wasn't about anything about horrible. It was just it was different just, things. Yeah, uh, I thought that was. Uh, so you're saying it was a tenth song? See, I, I thought it was like no, a seventh song. Oh, no, thirteen, 13 total. total. The How? thirteen song demo. How do I not? Started out six, and then we added more on the other seven, seven more. Does that make sense? And there were new songs. They, they weren't the same songs as these. Oh there yeah. Was, well, I wrote a yeah, list of like, yeah, what's, what the, I, what's the list of the songs? Uh, Lost the, Cause, Judgment. Lost God. Oh my God! Yeah, these are all the. Circles. This is the newer set that Kevin Kevin came back. <laughs> that we took the break and it was like heavier. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a lot heavier. I mean, there's still a. It's really, really very tight. <laughs> yeah. But not as jazzy, not as like yeah, yeah, loose yeah. as their original yeah, yeah. demo. But super clean. Guns and Bullets. Guns and bullets. You know, that, that was the other thing that I was thinking. That's, just, um, that's my song. I wrote that. Is that a better robbery? Really? Yeah, that's that's. Is that a bank robber? There it's was, not the bank robber song. That's oh. that's a that was a different song. But okay, uh, yeah, actually the bank robber song was really good. I don't know why we didn't stop doing it. Especially from the song "Guns and Bullets," that almost sounds like a gangster song. Like I, don't, I again, I don't know the, understand the lyrics very well. Um, I just know you know what I heard and what I made up in my head. But it seemed came across as where the first album, first demo, had a lot of like politics behind it. This one was a little bit more. I don't know, all over the map. It wasn't really as... Yeah. Guns and Bullets was like a... Loosely based on somebody that I knew had started off bad. And he, he did get shot. He didn't die, but... And it wasn't he didn't rob a bank, but he did get shot by somebody who robbed their house. But that's the story. They had a, he, you know, Guns and Bullets don't no bank. He, he robbed the store and he robbed some of the <coughs> Loosely yeah, based. That was an East Side kid. That was a. He lived up in the. Uh, he lived up in the uh, trailer states, or uh, where? Where did Kanye live? Way the fuck up there? Oh, uh, up on. Uh, Past Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. Yeah. Big, Lake Mead and 
out there. Right? Yeah, Lake Mead, past Hollywood, the big big trailer. Uh, it's still up there, that big community. Yeah, the kid lived up there, up there, there yeah. There's a lot of bad kids up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. East Side had its risk reputation yeah. for sure. So uh Car Thief in the Night, that's that's one that's pretty close to my heart. <laughs> See, I don't remember that one from the... I, no. I, I, I must have... Because I, I remembered it only being seven songs. Uh, Vicious Social Circle, Pride, Guns and Bullets, Creepy Crawl, and Water Vicious Bag. Social Secu- Circle, that's, I wrote that one. That's about high school. Uh, and Vicious Social Circle. It's about how things get out of hand, people talking about each other. Talking about me, talking Wait, about you, stupid comments, back seven two. Wait, is a uh, uh, hundred homeless... Or the homeless song is on this one? Thousand Homeless People, people yeah. in my town. I had to, you had to keep on changing the number. Now it's like yeah, no, it's ten thousand. Just on the whole thing. Oh, what about um, um, Dead Man Stairs? Uh, Dead Man, Dead Man. Yeah, that's it's also about a the Kevin slot, song. Uh, that's I think that's a Kevin song. Yeah, about yeah. the slot machines or about gambling. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys? You guys played at the test site a few times, right? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. More than once. Yeah. Twice. Oh, yeah. Okay. What uh, was uh, what was the scene with that? That was well, other the first bands? one was the MDC one, right? And then the second one was the next stop, Nevada. Next stop, Nevada. Right. Yeah, the first one. I forget the name of that uh, protest. I forgot the name of the first one. It had they. They all had names. They all, that was a local theme. Yeah, that was a local one. <laughs> that was yeah. That was by the AP American Peace Test APT. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think uh, also I don't know if you remember, but uh, Brian Brannon had a band called Sofrazarno. He played keyboards from JFA. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Keyboards. Yes, he had a band called Sofrazarno. I still, when I see him, I fuck with him about that. I go, you guys when he played here, Sofrazarno? He's like, no. Shut up. <laughs> and so it was just a two-piece band. It was him playing keyboards. And, and was that at the uh, test site? Yeah. I don't remember. It was man, the there the was so many, because it was like a lot of bands. Yeah, you guys played towards the end, and the yeah. sun started going down. And Yeah, that was a that was. But the NBC test. show was the second one. Which, yeah, that which, was the big one. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. The first one was like a local one. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, those were really good shows. Atomic Gods played. Oh yeah, because the second one was two days, and we played with Atomic Gods. And the next day was the some hippie band. The the the, they were from Europe. I, I oh yeah, yeah, that was yes, yes. It was a it the, was a Danish band, right? The or Danish the band, band. Yeah, I forget the name of them. Moonbeam or something like that. It was they, all the Danish people were there and naked dancing oh, dude, with yeah. handcuffs on because you know this was a protest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, Shit pissed. Yeah, yeah. It, it was didn't incredible. Jive, but it was weird. <laughs> it really, was that, weird. that, we got the, I mean, I think we played at the right time, man. The sun was setting. It was so awesome. I saw yeah. a picture of that. Yeah. And it's pretty I took amazing. those photos. Oh, that was your yeah. photos? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Chuck wow. took a lot of good photos of us. <laughs> Badger, too. Badger, remember? Oh, that guy. Badger. He was my idol, man. Mm-hmm. I was like, it could never be that good. There was a guy named he was Badger. A pho- he was a photographer. Yeah, I, he, I saw his name spray painted by Eldorado High yeah, School. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, how I know him. Yeah, I don't Badger, know him aside from yeah, the spray Yeah, he paint. was a sick good, I don't know what he did. He was just incredible fucking uh, photographer. It was like really good. Like you saw the photos. I was always like, oh, let's look like Badger. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, that was good. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how. Uh, so eventually Johnny kind of gets a little freaked out. Uh, you know, I, I we could talk about that. I, I don't want to delve too too deep in it. So there was a burgeoning like a. Um, they weren't Nazis at first. They were just construction workers. Uh, Blockhead Pat and his brother were like hiring all these young punker kids, and Pat was just like anti. He didn't like you know Im- you know immigrants taking jobs from Americans. So he started spreading this crap to these kids and then he started getting more into it with the clan stuff and started giving them all these this propaganda crap and Johnny worked for him for years and that that dude just dicked these kids over paid them shit and and treated them like shit and every you know everything he talked shit about he was doing to these kids so I don't know why that what they saw in him but they started following him and then the more he got into this crap and he would come over to the party mansion and yes. try to like talk politics with us, and we're all like, Pat, know, this guy, Pat, blockhead, Pat, yeah, yeah. yeah like, he he showed up to uh, it was Bergie Fest too. I remember I was blown away because the thing is that as my grandfather raised me and all that shit, so I saw this guy in full fucking German regalia with a fucking swastika armband. I thought I was just like, okay, I heard about people in anyway. the punk scene wearing swastikas, but this guy was fully dressed as an Nazi. And this thing, this thing happened quick, where he was just like. First it was clan propaganda, and then a week later he's in 
full blown fucking Nazi get ups. Like, and then all of a sudden, these kids are wearing Gestapo shit. Yeah, it's black, like, what like the black shit. Fuck that dude's going on. He had dude. the money because he made money off of those fucking kids, probably. Yeah. To yeah. buy, like, the full black uniform, and it was. He was the little Hitler. So he's got all these kids twisted on this shit, and he's trying to bring the, you know, it's the government. And so the things we're singing is kind of like jiving with what they're hearing, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're anti-government, but they're they're on a whole different fucking level of anti, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Johnny starts getting into it, and, and uh, I knew him and Pat worked together, and I didn't see it coming. Johnny wouldn't. Go into it, but you know, fuck the government, Johnny, you know, Johnny Banks. Yeah. But some point, the, the little skinhead following, the little kid following, turned into like Nazis, and there was just a point where me and I'm just you, you sit hot in front of me, we're fighting. So that's mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I'm fighting every week with these guys. Every fucking show, I'm in a fight, and then it's following my band around. And I'm not, I'm not putting two and two together quite as fast as I should have. And then I think we played a show at a Studio 25, and it was just full-on dudes with things standing in front of a Sig Highland while we're playing, and nobody's dancing. People stopped dancing. It wasn't fun anymore. Three, four songs into it, I, I, go, I go back to Mike. I go, Mike, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to get off the stage. I'm going to beat that dude up. I think it was Spider. Yeah. Me and Spider got in a fight. I jumped off the stage. I go... You know, we got to fight. They broke up. I got back out stage. I go, that's it. I'm done. I'm never fucking doing this again with these guys. And I walked. Me and Kevin, me and Mike walked out. Kevin and Johnny, from then on, they took it. They took the name Buckshit Piss, and they were doing it at their little, their Papco. house. They, uh, they were doing it at Papco, and me and John, me and <laughs> FSP Papco. I, you know what I mean? It's, both of them have apologized, and, and, and don't, they don't, you know what I mean? They, they, they know it was wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, and whatever they they got into their own thing. I don't think we need to talk about this too much. Or, or yeah, you know, fair you enough. Know what I mean, yeah. Um, I Johnny and Kevin will both be like bummed that we brought it up, and for good reason. Yeah. I mean, I I totally understand. Right. Um, but it's good to hear a little bit more of your perspective of how it went. It down. broke my heart, man. I got to tell Everybody. you, and and it was at a, oh. at a point where fuck shit piss could have really. Oh yeah. Yes. Gone we to were, another we were at that level. We could have taken that one step forward and gone. You know yeah. what I mean? All we needed was a van. Yeah. You know, we were already touring with no effects. We've done like... What the hell happened? Just shut off. Oh, she probably disconnected it. Um, look on the back right behind you. Shit. Just uh, look on the back. She disconnected it from the wall. No. Just move the, move, the, move the plug. Move the plug. Well, shit. I don't know if that last right. fifteen minutes might. Well, have then just maybe been that's just our conversation. Right? Uh, and we don't have to talk about that's that. Um, maybe that's for the best. What the fuck's going on? I, I mean, think it's, she it's a part of it. It is a wall. part of our history, and it should be discussed. But man, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fucking devastating. Jasmine, come here. Yeah, she pulled it from the wall. Just wiggle it. Oh. From the wall to your unit, is it loose? No, no, it's just plugged in. I don't know what the, what the hell happened. It was, dude, I saw her walk behind you. She pulled the plug. Jasmine, come here, Mama. Come here, baby. Well, what did I do, man? Oh, she's good for talking about Nazis. Yeah. She's German, so she can't. Well, she took a I see that. I told you not to bring it up in front of us. <laughs> oh. Like she knows the whole history of that yeah. shit. She, the, the, the thing is, is that um, I always, um, uh, hanging out with Kevin and Johnny, um, when I started going to their house, when they lived over there off of like... The, uh, by the Honda shop, yeah. Yeah. It was the White just House, like, they called it the White House. Yeah, before they became Nazis, because that was their transition house. Yeah. Like, it was incredible. Like, like, Kevin would look out for us, he would talk yeah, to yeah. us. He was like our, He was like the dude, you know? I told you, oh, and then Johnny is like, God, man, we gotta get this together. We gotta, we gotta unite and do this stuff. And that's the other thing is like their whole history of being downwinders and, and then, then then being like, you know, that's what I could never get, man. They were like peace punks. They yeah. were against it, and then and now all of a sudden it's like, whoa, it was. Weird. I I think I drove a, a fucking big wedge and kind of 
because when I I made a point of like, look, we're the, you can't be a part of our scene. This can't. So yeah. I drove a, a wedge deeper where Kevin and Johnny had to make their own thing. So that was probably yeah. a lot of my doing, where I was like, you know, I'm gonna fight you guys every fucking time. Sean Stone's gonna fight. He's gonna fight the big guys. I'm gonna fight the medium guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny, you're known for fighting. Awesome. What a what a I mean Jesus Christ like what a bunch of different jobs you've had I wanted to ask you about yeah. the the uh, Corman when you were working with and yeah, you went to Sean, LA yeah. so you left town yeah Sean actually had moved away yeah and he got the job through fucking uh what's his name that died the guy from uh. Uh, one of those bands that always played the fucking with the. Uh... Oh, I'm gonna. Say, were they a funk band? No, no, no. It was just one of those weird bands. Uh, I think uh, Mike Madu was in it. Um, local like, band. Local band. Uh, they played at the Gates of Hell all the time. Not righteous pigs. No, not no. fucking. No, it's part of that crowd though. Oh. Anyway, the Mike. Hey, what was the friend? What was your friend that lives in Pahrump? He was in that metal band. Doomsday Cult? Dude, that's who it is. Yeah. <laughs> the singer for Doomsday Cult died recently. Spy, uh, Spy, Ace. 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 Anyway, he lived with Ace. Ace lived in Hollywood and he moved in with Ace and he got the job at Corman Studios. So he goes, dude, I need you. I need to have you working with me. I trust you. I know what you're capable of. So he brings me out and in, within two weeks, we took over the fucking art department. We were art department lackeys. Pulling nails within two weeks, we fucking we are changing things and we take over the art department. Sean Sloan is now head guy of the art department at fucking <laughs> Roger Corman Studios, and I'm his second in command, dude. Yeah. What movies did so you guys do? We did, uh, it did a lot of remakes. Our the Humanoids from the Deep Two, Star Quest Two, uh, fuck a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff for uh, the. Showtime summer series. They did the Roger Corman summer series for like three years. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We did Click, uh, a bunch of bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. Click was a Milo Manara uh, heavy metal story that they bought the rights to, where it was a guy that had a box that he could turn invisible and fuck with women. Oh. So it was all low budget softcore porn. So I'm the guy. I'm the dude. I'm the special effects guy. Special effects rigging. I have credit for it. I have a fucking, you go on the IMDb. I go to IMDb, that's there. <laughs> All I did was fucking uh, undo women's clothing and then so you couldn't see, you know what I mean, with a, uh, I forget the line, not just fishing line, but like uh, this, they have this specialty wire for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. visibility tricks. Yeah. A lot of, uh, um, so it looks like somebody's, the invisible guy's playing with their booty. I, I came up with this thing air uh, from a compressor nozzles on all my fingers and you just stand back out of fucking thing and just go like this and you could see the air going like this <laughs> on, on, on their breath on, on their her breasts. breasts yeah so i'm like are you okay honey are you okay with that she goes what oh, tickles yeah, those are getting really hard yeah, nah, that's the kind of shit i was doing for like two summers man and what, what then i got to do uh casper the friendly ghost part two <laughs> I did a lot of the a lot of the ghost effects on Casper, but it, because it. it was during the strike, I was roaching, you know, cockroaching in as as special effects rig. I got credit on that. Wow. <laughs> Checo, you just mentioned like you've had some fucking crazy jobs your whole life. Like, yeah. can you tell us a, a couple of the weird ass fucking jobs you've had? Uh, well, uh, straight out of high school, because I had me, you know, me and Judy had Brittany, so uh, straight out of high school, I had to be a roofer. Um, that was a terrible. That was a terrible job. I hated roofing. Um, but you had an awesome tan. I had a great tan. <laughs> God damn it. We and then the thing is, is that Danny really rode the Hawaiian thing because he was born in Hawaii. But then we were like, damn, he really is Hawaiian. Well, yeah. There's something about this guy. Like, got any he, Hawaiian in you? Yeah. Want some? <laughs> then I come to find out, like 55, you know, I'm 55 years old, and I find out I'm not Hawaiian. I'm just Portuguese. <laughs> I thought it was Portuguese Hawaiian. I thought it was a thing. Yeah. Just Portuguese. Anyway, so uh, well, I've had a lot of weird jobs. Yeah, um, I were, sold uh, reptiles and yeah. primates for years. That's uh, what was the name of that place? Wild Kingdom. Wild Kingdom. Wild Kingdom. You're place. walking in there and seeing Danny with a monkey. Dreadlock. <laughs> monkey on my back. 
<laughs> so good. Um, I uh, did the ballooning, hot air ballooning thing. The balloon uh, thing. Uh, what else? A lot of weird things, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm doing work in soundboards. Right on. Is that, what's your title? Are you an audio guy? Audio, or? yeah. Generally, generally A1 or A2 uh, for most of the basketball games. That's right. It's only the basketball games, or uh, any most a lot of events. So they uh-huh. they they don't just do basketball things at Thomas yeah. and Mac and at Cox Pavilion. There's a bunch of little uh, boardrooms and stuff like that on oh, the side right, where I do right. little yeah little events. I'm the guy that's sitting behind a board, trying to control wireless mics for people that don't know how to use a mic. It's the terror. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. It's surprising how many people don't know how to talk into a microphone. What? <laughs> As I like look away <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> Things like that would piss me off. <laughs> anyway. Well, I know, I'm sorry, this is all fucked up, but I, I gotta steal your mic for a second, Chuck. Uh, so you're, I mainly know you for your drawings, but have you done any color stuff? Do you get into painting at all? I, I tried a little painting. Uh, a lot of that's, a lot of this artwork that Checo's bringing up, we're bringing stuff up on his laptop. Uh-huh. That's all colored pencil. Um, I do have some acrylic paintings at home that I don't show anymore. I'm not, I'm not good at it. I'm not, I was never trained. I know some of these, some of you guys went to art school. I never got, never got to do that. But we're just looking at flyers on his uh, uh, laptop and uh, <laughs> some weird stuff. Here. Hey, where's the movie from that? Whatever happened with that? That was, that actually was a, a late night commercial for the hair zoo. I forget the, the cable channel. It was the only cable channel that local, I forget. You know, I... Dimension Cable? Is that what? Yeah, yeah, the Dimension Cable Network, but I forget the channel that it was on. But H21? it was twenty like, one. No, it was it was well before that. I mean, I forget what it was. It wasn't. It was on actual cable. It was like a cable thing, cable access show or commercial. But it was a really good commercial. Jerry did a really good job with it. But you had to be up at like four a.m. So I've seen it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, did you have any more questions you wanted to go through? Or? Uh, uh, well, I guess I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, aside from flyers, um, did you do like any kind of graphic designs? Like, did you ever get paid like gigs? Like, someone came to you and said, "You're fucking great." You know what? 20, even, the, like, even the t-shirt four, 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 designs, four. unless I printed them myself, I didn't make money on them. I didn't. Oh, really? Yeah, I just did it for free. Yeah. You know, somebody would pay me like. 50 bucks sometimes but that didn't happen often Mm -hmm. no no just for the love of doing it (coughs) well patrick patrick in chicago man he was he's still around he's still uh but uh pns productions was a bunch of comp tapes and uh, i did a bunch of their early covers poor people productions was that just you or was was that a boy it started with boy eats girl Uh productions that was my thing and then Poor People Productions. Um, then I know there was Bad Musicians Co-op. So it, so it became uh, when uh, Poor People with Poor Taste Production because Sean's, his production thing was Poor Taste Productions. So we combined Poor People with Poor Taste and that eventually became the, the Bad Musicians Co-op with Pablo and me and Sean. Oh, so then, and then he moved back and started helping with shows. Yeah, yeah, Paul. Yeah. Oh. We all lived together at the party mansion. Yep. And you had mentioned uh, earlier, I mean, you got into a lot of fights at some of these shows. Uh, and, I, and I don't want to harp on it too much, but um, does violence ever solve anything? It never, it, never, <laughs> it never did, man. It never did. And then it became a, it, it sucked because it followed me around later on. Like the early thing, I wasn't trying to prove a point. I just didn't like bullies. 
And then it became a thing where somebody had to prove themselves. Yeah, they would with, come and because fight they thought you were a bully. They, I don't know what they thought, but yeah. all of a sudden I'm the guy to fight. Yeah, that was I remember that people would just come to Danny to fight, and he was like, like I'm not doing anything. Like, why are these people? Come? I mean, we would see that we're like. People just want to go fight Danny now. Yeah, yeah. And there was people it, that it would it, it would be a thing where um, people that we didn't even know would come up and want to fight Danny. Yeah, like it was I, like I this stigma. It. Like, but the thing is, is that he, I, Danny was like not in, like the buffest dude, but you would not fuck with him. Like he would fucking kick your ass. <laughs> Well, you, you tended to win a lot of these, right? Or yeah. uh, oftentimes a draw? Yeah. Or, no, I could sucker punch somebody, I would, let me tell you. <laughs> but the thing is, he wouldn't fight it. He would, usually, I can remember the people that you'd fight were, were bigger than you. Oh, generally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he wasn't like some dude that was, he, he wasn't a bully. Yeah, he would, he would go on. But I, I, I would see some stuff, I was like, damn. I think one of the dirtiest fights I ever saw was, actually, it was pretty rad. It was like a TV show, because we were just watching it. And um, this guy, and this is in St. George, Utah. Oh, for fuck's sake. And this guy comes at Danny, and Danny swings the door on the dude's head. This dude was that would not stop. It was, it so was let, early. So you want me to explain how that all started? Oh, God. You want to hear? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of So course. that's the, uh, the uh, um, no effects and the New York band, uh, whatchamacallit, who was it? Mm. Um, it wasn't Reagan News. Yeah, Reagan News. Reagan News didn't show, yeah. but it was no effects, Reagan okay. News. I put the show on in St. George. So me, uh, me and Judy drove up there and with Brittany, my daughter, she's only like two, and, we're, and Judy's at the door collecting money, Brittany's there with her, and you know, it's like all the girls are taking care of Brittany, and uh, this drunk hick, I mean a big kind of t- lard ass hick, comes over and whose kid is this? And he's like kind of putting it, I go, hey man, that's my child, don't, you don't need to leave her alone. You know, and he's like talking into my face, spitting with his, you know, beer breath. I wasn't a drinker then. I was kind of straight, maybe. I, I don't think I drank most of those times. Anyway, so this guy like is getting like a little more belligerent with me. And I'm going, I'm just telling you, don't touch my kid. Leave my child alone. And then Judy says something. Yeah, leave your fucking hands off our kid. And he says something to her. And that was, he said something to Judy. And that, that was all I needed. You know what I mean? I took him out immediately and that, that was that he left little did I know he had a, two other other brothers that <laughs> me, he was the youngest there was older and there was the older brother so the old the second in line shows up to kick my ass this this happens like right around the corner not in the parking lot this one happens at the corner of the building and I quickly took care of him he was drunk also I mean big shot big took large asses can't fight. So he goes crying to his older brother and this one, this goes on, they're all three now in the parking lot and this is happening in the parking lot. So kick his ass, they're telling his big brother and it was a couple of spin kicks and he was done. But that, that yeah, that it was fun going to St. George and beating up Hicks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's how horrible it got that we had to go to another state to have shows. Yeah, 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 <laughs> things were getting pretty bad. The, the, the Actually, the St. George kids were really cool, man. Oh, ben and... Uh, yeah, Ben. Uh, they had that Ben... Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Deviants. The, the Deviants. And I Great kids. Uh, Did you throw that Offspring show up there? No, no. That wasn't me. I think that, that was, was Chris other. Chunk. Yeah, yeah. But um, Danny also had shows at this place called the... The the cotton mill, the cotton mill in Washington. Washington, yeah, in Washington, in yeah. Washington. Washington. <laughs> so the cotton mill was literally a cotton old cotton mill, and the lady I forget her name. Oh uh, my god, Pam or something. So I don't know. She was, a wonderful yeah. old lady. She oh, loved my. us, man. She'd go like, whatever you guys need. I brought food. She'd spend the night. There's places to sleep. She made Dude, this beautiful so. big. Uh, antique building available to us for anything and wow. she was there during the, show. the whole time and, and she's like, like you're the welcome the... welcome welcome slam dancers and punk rockers yeah and all the girls all the punk rock girls and you know the east side girls would like hang out with her and they should be knitting and like wow. telling her yeah. stories but to them the, the, you know the raddest thing that i mean and this is what i, I remember I'm, I'm glad i was part of this time the scene because we were really unified that when we went in there, everybody was super respectable. Like we, yeah, yeah, like, there was we nobody in. Nice. Nobody, nobody trashed the like, bathroom. It, we, we, you yeah, wouldn't do that. Cause... Nothing. Everybody was super cool. 
They're very nice. And Go she, introduce yourself to her and everything. I, did you ever see the photo where I have everybody and her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we all took this photo with my, my sister's camera. Thank you for stealing that. <laughs> and uh, she was there. And she had a Pillsbury Hardcore shirt yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was that scene. Those guys were playing there. So they were playing shows in St. George that they wouldn't even come here. We're like, what the fuck? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. But that was really cool. I mean, but, and we were like, if there was a protest, we all showed up. Like, you know, because Danny would say, hey, this is what's going on. Okay, we're all there. We were all very supportive, and everybody helped each other out. It was like, it was rad. Like, when we, because we, we, I mean, we, we, we'd hear about these other scenes, I was like, I don't think ours, uh, our scene was better. Yeah. Like, we actually had some unity. We didn't have any fighting. Everybody got along. Except for the me, I was fighting. Well, yeah, and then Danny's fights. But there was, that was, even that wasn't really a random thing. But there was like, goth kids hanging out with fucking preppies hanging out with stoners we all hung out yeah it wasn't just a just decked punks it wasn't that at all yeah there was that too and you could you go to other scenes and it wasn't like our scene our scene had like just inclusive yeah everybody it didn't matter yeah it was like wow i mean you see some preppy kids here when people used to wear their collar yeah 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 at the show we're like fuck it yeah i mean i'll just don't swing on anybody don't yeah yeah you'd get fucked up but that was it. I, I likened it to like how the, the feeling was when we eventually made it over to Gilman, you know? Yeah. How Gilman was. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's how you guys fit in so well there when you guys played there. Yeah. I just want to say I, I was I was the tour <laughs> manager for uh, <laughs> Jordan. We took Danny because he was our chaperone. But it was the like worst chaperone ever. ever. He, he like took off and was hanging out with all these girls. <laughs> He like, got me Thanks. really stoned on LSD. Oh know? my god, at Kevin's place. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah. Oh man, that's didn't we go to uh, the Shay Ashtray? Was that with you or with? Uh... We lived. Uh, well, I ended up living there at one point. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went to the Ashtray too, and then we went to the uh, the. Uh, David, the, what's her, the girls? The Stacy's house up in the Stacy's house. No, no. We also went to the uh, what were they called? The um... Yeasty Girls. Remember the them? Yeasty Girls. Remember those chicks? Oh, yep, yep. I sure yeah. do. Yep. We stayed at their place in Oakland for a little yeah. bit. We just hung out there. I don't, I don't think we stayed there. We, then we went back to the Shash, right? Dude, we, we, went to, we went to all the rad places. We were like the Vegas crew. And, and then the, the other thing is that we brought the word hella, but that's another story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> David Hayes they, and all those guys, they loved us down yeah, there, man. Yeah, yeah, they put us on the record. Yeah. Yeah. Super respected from what I remember. Like that scene, that uh, East Bay scene was super enamored with the Vegas Schizoid. Kids, yeah. Specifically Schizoid. Schizoid. Oh, no, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, I mean. You guys went there and kicked major. But serious yeah, we, kids we kept happen. on going and like having a good time but you know that's the thing is like we were i mean that's why we took danny on the first fucking we took danny and it was pwt yeah, yeah. i remember that um but danny was our roadie and he drove the truck and we went to santa barbara yeah, and actually met the rkl guys yeah, like yeah, walking yeah. around like kind of like out of it yeah, but yeah that was but, the end of that but the bomber was up in san francisco by then yeah yeah he was so staying we, into the shash right yeah we were, it was it was crazy but um it was I tell people about that. And I mean, some people, I think you there guys, was a did time. Did you guys play the Red Barn in IV? No, no, no. no. Okay. no. So it, was, it was after that, okay. Yeah, we got to we got to play some cool shows. But, yeah. I mean, it was all this inspiration that we had from here. We thought everybody was the same. Then you go to other scenes, you're like, whoa, we're actually. Or, or later on, we would play other shows and we had other bands later on, like in the 90s. Or it was like, man, our scene in the 80s was better than the your scene. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it was, it was cool, man. It was a very historical moment for being such a small place. But. I know all the bands that came here. I would like to hear their stories on their take. On what they thought of us. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah because well, I know they're it, respectable that. Definitely. Uh, what's his name? Hated us. Uh, uh, DC band. Uh, government uh, issue. Government issue. I was at that show. Yeah. And I could see why I could see why he hated Stab, Vegas. John, John, John Stab. John hated it. Yeah. He, didn't, yeah. he didn't even get in his, like, his gear that he would wear at his shows. He just he goes, man, this, this is. He goes, I don't know what's going on here, but you guys are going to, this is not good. He didn't dig, because there's a lot of skinhead stuff still going on. Totally. A lot yeah. of, it was a lot of, it wasn't fights, I don't think, that night, but he felt a different. Oh, that, uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I get it, but yeah, I talked to them, I, after John died, I talked to uh, the guitarist, I forget his name. Um, I talked to him on Facebook, and you know, he goes, oh man, he goes, thank you for doing that, but God, we hated that. We wanted to leave immediately as soon as we got there. Not that it was an outdoor, but what was going on? The, the vibe was just ugly. I go, well, you know, yeah, that's what it we were happen. fighting it as much as we can. And sorry, it wasn't that show was not a Nazi or skinhead show. It was a, it was our thing that they were, 
you know. Was that the one that, when they marched in? Yeah, I think so. Uh, they, they yeah, yeah, the Sean, Sean was there stopping it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, because the thing is, is that, that's another thing with a lot of these Nazis. Some kids, I didn't know who they were. But another kids are like, oh, you look different now that you shaved your head. <laughs> but the other thing is that there are some kids that were just like, you know what, I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight. Yeah. Like, they were just like, walk away. Because I don't even remember Johnny fighting that. I remember those Johnny other guys fought, fighting. Yeah. Everybody else was fighting, not Johnny. Yeah. Like, it was bummed. I mean, it was, it's crazy just to see that. But, I mean, that's part of our history, man. Yeah, yeah. We got a well, lot of a buffet. Well, the, also, the thing is, um, that was a nationwide trend, I yeah, feel it was like. Exactly. It wasn't just yeah, Las Vegas that yeah. was overrun by Nazis. No. Um, I mean, every scene, all of a sudden, the, in the late the, 80s. The war skin in the early 80s kind of brought that in. They, you know, they started taking over the, the skinhead scene, the war thing. White Aaron Resistance, resistance yeah. Tom Metzger. Tom Metzger's kids, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, that's another thing is that we were put on this death list. Uh, well, of I course, was Danny definitely. was on there, yeah. and we were on there, Skits always on there. I mean, it was like receiving an Academy Award, you know, going <laughs> up and receiving your death wish, your, your death wish list. Yeah, and then uh, when I had a conversation with Johnny later, a few years ago, He's like, man, I went over to Tom and I told him to take it off. I told you, I told him to take all you guys off of it. Like, yeah, I shouldn't be on there. You know, like he, he's like, he knew. He's like, you know, I don't want, and he goes, I'm, I'm about this, but I don't want these people that I'm around me to get hurt. He still had that kind of heart, that, that heart, man, you know, and I don't know. Yeah. That's another story. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty much running to the end. I do have some pictures that maybe we could look at. Sure. If you want to make yeah, some yeah, comments. Yeah, you were talking about that. Let's do that. I just think it'd be funny to catch, catch your reaction. Who made that? Um, you know, we, um, I got together with Jerry, and we have these huge posters. posters. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This is you. Did I make this? I don't remember. Yeah, but we had a big poster besides this. I mean, there's other flyers underneath this. Yeah. There's the Circle Jerk show that never happened. Yeah. Well, I remember uh, Jerry had that one poster made for my art show that Jerry yep. did, the bad, the lava thing. I got that. So that, I think that's part of that. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah, I have that poster. Yeah, I but think. I don't remember this. I actually, I got to take that off the wall. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's in my archives, man. So, uh, Steve Johnson had one also. I don't know. I think he bought it. And you know I have all I the photos from the G- Steve Johnson jumping in the water? Yeah. I have, the, have the whole the orig- sequence. From the original photographer, what's it? Uh, yeah, Bill? Yeah. Bill Hughes. Bill Hughes. Yeah. Wow. People, yeah, because, that's that's still on all the Las Vegas uh, history. Yeah, yeah. And that thing pops up, and I, you know, yeah. Yeah, I have those photos. So Bill Hughes, yeah. Maybe I'll show him this. His year. brother, Bill Hughes' brother, is in the background, sitting on the wall with another ah. camera. Yeah. I don't know if you know that, but Bill, no, no. Yeah, they talk about that. Yeah, that's that's Bill's brother back there. Yeah, yeah. There's like a guy on the wall. Uh, yeah, he's the guy with his legs hanging. Yeah, over yeah. The wall. That's Bill Hughes' brother. And then Steve Johnson jumping up. Jumping off his leg. I have that poster. So here's a couple of photos, and it, when you talk about it, explain what the photo is, because uh, you know, okay, this, you is, this is all audio that we're doing here. So I just want to get your opinion on some of these, and some of them are pretty funny, and some of them aren't as funny. I hope it seems I haven't seen before. You've seen. Oh, that. there it is. That's that's second cowboy, or yeah, that's sec. No, that's third. That's third with his yeah. Yeah. Look, look, the funny thing about this is there's Rob Asshole and Kevin in the background just kind of hanging out. Oh, yeah. those gloves I'm wearing. Oh, so this yeah, is a yeah. picture of me, and this is at the uh, No Effect show in St. George. And this oh, is this one is St. George. This, this yeah. is one of the guy, one of the uh, brothers that I'm fighting, but, who is obviously much bigger than me. Yeah, the funny thing, like, like I said, there's Rob Asshole is right in the center, yeah. and then Kevin uh, LaFontaine is behind him, yeah. just kind of watching, just, because the thing is, is like if it really got out of control, then those guys would get which, involved. Yeah. <laughs> so they're just kind of right there. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Look, people are smiling in this photo as yeah. Danny's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> this is so those gloves. Yeah, those, that was a Christmas gift from Jesse Baxter. My little oh. gloves. Yeah, I miss that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so always wear that shirt at the cover. Into my yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, that? exactly. Yeah. He 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 didn't wear the shirt on him. He I actually never stepped wore in his a shirt pants. in the eighties. Just stuck <laughs> in my pants. And he, he used to wear sunglasses too at night. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they were prescription, so <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that was one of the uh, brothers that 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 I uh, got. There's an actual photo of him coming at the door too. I've seen that photo. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where um, I remember when he did the door, but I re- he's coming at you. It's an old car. Oh, uh, Judy's cars in, are the Volkswagens in the background? Or no, no, it's a white. It's a white car. Like, a like an sedan. old sedan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I, mean, I think I. 
So this has got to be. Oh uh, yeah, there we this go. got to be at the Elks Lodge. I'm assuming. No, this is the order of uh, order of Eagles Hall on Tenth oh. Street. And this is Descendant Show. This is a. Uh, I remember this base yeah, is the George's. Beat. This is George's yeah, George. base yeah. from the Atomic Gods. Yeah. What happened is, so FSP would get there, show up to play. They think, God, I'm big my PA system. That's that's um. That was all uh, yours. No, this is uh. The bottom and this part. This part was um. The uh, Scott Hills. Oh, Scott Hill brought, yeah, he brought some of his shit. The sound was to, great. The sound night. was great, yeah. So, uh, it was VA, Atomic God's debut, uh -huh. FSP, and then the Descendants. Um, Johnny shows up and he goes, all right, I'm here to play. And he doesn't have any gear with him. He didn't bring... <laughs> I don't know what had happened to Johnny or Kevin wasn't living at the house at the time, like Mary and him had, uh... had a tip. So, Kevin brought his shit and Johnny left his base at home because nobody brought it for him. This is an ongoing, this was not a, com this was a common occurrence. Anyway, so Johnny doesn't have a base, so he borrows George's, that's like a $1,200 base, this Flying B base. Johnny borrows it and there's a chip, he chipped it. He chipped the fucking <laughs> yellow enamel. He hit the fucking side speaker, man. So anyway, we're, this, I think this is after the stage collapse because or this is before oh, the stage class. The stage I, class. I remember I'm having people come up. So it's a picture of me and Kevin Cattell from PWT singing. He's got a uniform choice shirt on. <laughs> anyway, and then you can see part of the George's bass. Anyway, that Kevin awesome. Cattell is up here singing. I'm holding the microphone and we're doing a he's singing. I'm probably Newsman or something. Yeah. Some song that Kevin obviously knows. He knew them all. He knew them all. Actually. He knew them all. <laughs> so <laughs> soon <laughs> after this picture, I think like, Half the the front, everybody in the front row jumps on the stage to sing along with the song. I don't know what. So we built that stage. It's a stage that we would carry around. It was like a a a, a thing Sean Sloan devised that you could just put up and set, set stage parts. So it was like compartmentalized, like that way. You know, you could. It was easy to transport. It all fit in the back of the van. So we brought the stage in. All these kids jump on it, and the whole front of the stage collapses. Like the front just, and we're falling, and kids are falling off. And, and FSP never stopped playing. They just continue playing. I stopped singing. I'm trying to get people, help people off the stage. <laughs> the, the song ends, and they still play. I think they play an instrumental, one of the slower things. Yeah, yeah. Be, and, and a couple of kids lift up the stage. Sean, I hear Sean in the back because we built the stage. We had our tools there. Sean's in the back with a sawzall ripping two by fours to repair the stage. This is all happening while the band's playing. So yeah, the stage got destroyed. We fixed the stage while we're playing. Sean Sloan fixed the stage, hammered it back together, and we continued the show. Descendants got on right after that and played a blistering set of hardcore. Jesus Christ. That night it rained and, and yeah. somebody had brought a lot of LSD into that show and there were kids dosing. The, 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 see how sweaty we are? It was like humid yeah, in there. It's humid. It, it was so a humid. BMW up there off, off And it was upstairs and yeah. there was only one stairwell to get in and I mean my speakers, I don't know if you see those bottoms, they were 48 by 48. They're 44 by 4 block. Big thing. And they barely fit i mean i think we had to take a door i think we took a door thing off to get it up. oh shit. yeah and we put it back on but yeah what you know, what year was that i'm sorry uh, it's there's actually a flyer 80, for it. I, I, I think I it's it. the all flyer oh jesus look at this flyer was that the first time descendants played here uh no i don't believe so mm -hmm. But a uh, robo, uh, no, no, that, that wasn't the. It was uh, not the first time they played. Yeah, um, Robo from uh, Black Flag was playing drums with them that night, so mm -hmm. it was really good. And it was Milo. It was Milo's tour back after being gone from college. So, wow. pretty uh, big tour. We were lucky to get them, and I was really lucky to play that show. Yeah, I, you know what I remember about that show is being that pissed that you didn't get to play it. Oh, besides that, we were, but we went, we went, and we still supported. We didn't sneak in. We, we were on anybody's guest list. Is that when the light, when the lights turned on, there was uh, all these people with devil locks. Do you remember that? I don't remember this. The lights came on, and I was, I forgot who I was with. I, well, I was hanging out with Kevin, and we're sarcastic assholes. And we just started laughing at these dudes in their faces because, and like every wall, there was some dude with their foot up on the wall with the devil lock. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like, who are you guys? And That's we're just funny. laughing. Like, we were such assholes. Because now we're just like, hey, we're part. We're actually part of the scene. You know, we thought we were all like... Everybody else supposed we're yeah, yeah, we finally reached that point. <laughs> Three months Sweet. later. This, anyway. This is one of my favorite photos that's of all it. time. Uh, oh, that's it. Vibrance. Black and white. Yeah. Did you take this check off? This is, no, this is El Dorado people, me. man. That's John Easterwood, Scott. Uh, like a Rob Asshole. Rob Asshole. Brought, uh, Badger. Um, oh, shit. Is uh, Sean um, Patrick? Sean Patrick. This is Jeff Davis's brother, uh, and that's um, Laura. These are all El Dorado people. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sean Patrick. All El Dorado. So this is at Vibrance. Uh, might have been a doggy style show. Oh shit! The infamous do- yeah, this might have really? been the infamous doggy style show. I Ooh. put this one on infamous, so, infamous in what oh, way? Oh man! So I, I actually the first show I ever saw, FSP schizoid doggy style band X. Oh okay, so that Elks that Lodge was. in Northtown. Yeah, this but is, this is not that show that you're talking about. No, this was after- it was pretty. Infamous to me because yeah. everyone got naked and no, was no. each this, other. This is, we this, heard about that show, so we tried to make it better, but not. This is like this crazy. was even more crazy. Yeah, yeah. They got so yeah. They they did the the dog dance, the doggy style, and not none of these kids did it, but the the uh, team cheese. <laughs> you know, to a team. I you can yeah, yeah. Team yeah, cheese, yeah. Kent Kelly and all those kids. They got completely buck ass naked and they were all dry humping each other. Well, it wasn't so dry, I don't, I don't think. But anyway, there's this line, there's a picture of it of this line of buck ass naked boys doing the doggy style, 20 uh, deep. Anyway, uh, the owner of the place was a, a nice, nice guy, Ahmad, Ahmad, Ahmad. Uh, he might have been Persian, Syrian, or I don't know what, you know what I mean, Iraqi, I don't know, but. Uh, he wanted to own a little. He made this little teen disco club that he was only he was only having little, uh, not even dances, just like teen get-togethers. You know what I mean? Because like like he had back home, and then it turned into like more dancing stuff. But he wasn't he wasn't filling up the place. Nobody was going to these things. So I don't know who talked to him first. It might have been <laughs> Rob or somebody told us about it. And so I went and talked to him on. I go, hey, I, I could fill your. <laughs> Bar, I could fill your, you know, this little hall up. It was literally a small, really small hall. I think it was two rooms. The little, the little entry room where he served co- where he served sodas for five bucks, oh, <laughs> and geez. then the the actual room where you play. But man, yeah, that only lasted four shows. Mad Parade played there. Uh, oh, we even did TSOL there. I did see that. Is that Mad Parade with TSOL? Might have been. Yeah, that was at uh, that place. It was. Yeah, I think a window got broke or something. That was the last one. Bergie Beer had yeah. a big part of FSP. What is the story with that? Because I actually, I remember going to Bergie Fest 2, yeah. which I believe was a debut of Substance D. Yeah, it was. Lethal yeah, Injection. Lethal. Yeah. Um, but I remember that show, and I remember somebody drove their car the into truck. the pit. Yeah, it was like an El Camino or something, right? No, it, was, it was a mini truck. It yeah, was, yeah. Uh, it was whose like truck? Like a Hokkaido or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Filled with Bergie Beer. Uh, you're welcome. I, yes. I jumped in my and entire, grabbed was, a couple of those. Yeah, that was kidding, probably half that. my check. Yeah. Anyway, so... Thank you, Danny. You're welcome. Hey, Thanks. so uh, we... Bergy was really cheap. I mean, three bucks for a 12-er or something. Even less than... I think it was two ninety nine sometimes for a 12-pack of beer. So that's what we... We drink it all the time. You couldn't get drunk on it. You really couldn't. Could you? Um, I, mean, I don't remember. Did. I mean, when you're fucking when you're 13. 12, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but most of us older guys couldn't get drunk on it, but it was funny, you know. So we, this whole idea that FSP was the Bergie band, because you go into our rehearsal place yeah. and there's Bergie beer cans everywhere. So that kind of took off on its own. And then we decided, well, let's have a, there, there were beer fests going on. Budweiser was having something for the MTV thing or something the summer mtv summer of mtv and it was sponsored by budweiser you know what i mean and uh gang green was doing the budweiser yeah, thing, yeah, remember yeah, right, right. that's where we took that from i go well you know they in fact that show we played with them they had all their their budweiser with their skateboards and all that you know what i mean and it was like oh, you guys are fags i didn't dig it it was like corporate so this is kind of a, a you know yeah Slam take on that whole thing. This looks to be the first Bergie because I was at the this second was, one. There was the only Bergie. two, this right? This is the first Bergie. No, there were three. Was three. Yeah. There was three. Uh, yeah, look at the FSP flyer in the background. Yeah, this is the. In fact, <laughs> I think this is the debut for yeah. the for the, the for the thing, yeah. and it's also the first Bergie fest. I, I, I have brought, this on video. Yeah, <laughs> Mike Hill. 
LDHC on the back. Of the um, yeah. So that was at Johnny's house. Johnny's house. Yeah. That's Mike Hill right there. That's Mike Hill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. not the photographer, Mike. Hill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mike Hill from PWT. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The other Mike Hill. Yeah. Who? Uh, PWT actually debuted that show right there. Yeah. Burger Fest one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah they showed up. Oh, I, I don't have too many. Classic. Yeah. Oh, that's this is a great shot. There's he, the police tape. Look at the kids. The, this kid I remember from El Dorado. Um, that's Pill's sister that passed. Becca. Away. Becca, I think she died. Yeah, I believe so. Oh my god. I think I, I'm not sure. But it looks like Becca. I don't know who that dude is. He looks it does rugged. look like Becca. That looks like Mike hit Mike Faust, but it can't possibly. No, be. no. <laughs> I don't know who that. That these people. I don't. And this. I know this girl. I don't remember her name. There's asshole again right up front. That's Faust's uh, girlfriend. Remember the blonde. Oh, God. really pretty girl. She's hiding her face. Yeah, I don't know what she's doing with his other hand. But um, yeah, look. She's at, probably like, oh, I hate this shit. This is this is epic FSP right here because for one thing, uh, Johnny's skinny. He's right. got his, <laughs> he's got his bangs. He's got his bangs. Danny's got the headband, and then look at Kevin is always like impeccable. Yeah, he's just always like precise. You know, just like the, the weird thing. It's a picture of FSP at Losi Road, and it's the first Losi. It's not the tubes. Um, I just got to say, if Kevin ever reads this or hears this, it's good on you, Kevin. Your mouth's closed. Because <laughs> every picture of him, is, his mouth is open. I don't know why. <laughs> I want to thank you very much, Danny, for thank coming you, man. and, and doing this. Because this is a fun John down memory road. Dude, thank I'm so glad that we could do it. Um, and I hope that maybe this will lead to more. Because yeah, there's a lot of stuff. We there's missed. more stories yeah. that that only two hours wouldn't even fit right, in. Right. I mean, and you know, I would. We, you, you know, know oh. we discussed. We didn't even discuss the end of Losi Road, which is a no, no horror story in itself. So we can do that at a yeah. later time. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, do you have anything else to say, Chucka? No, no. I'm just like I can't believe all the rad stories. Like, yeah. I mean, I always well, I always talk about the scene. You know, now I have more stories to add to it <laughs> that I never knew. I'm just like, oh my god, there's so much more to this. I mean, I would like to come back and maybe have uh, maybe Greg Higgins or Jerry interview uh, Danny and talk about the style of art because the thing is he's self-taught, but man, there's so many different things. The typography, the type of drawing, I mean, the shading itself. Yeah. Just really quickly, I want to say one of my influences is Bad Otis Link for that. That's yeah. this. The fat lines? The Fat lines. If you look at Bad Otis's early, and then getting to meet him later is, and 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 he said, he goes, man, I've seen your art. I, you know, your art was around, and he goes, yeah, it's really good. I what what's his name again? I don't Bad know. Otis. Bad Otis. He Bad did, Otis. Uh, he did the Fenders Ballroom. Any flyers? of the Fenders? Any of the okay. early yeah. Golden Boy stuff? Yeah, gold, yeah, him. yeah. I mean, he was. But the thing is, is, at the same time, there's this guy on the East Side doing this fucking totally different shit. You don't see stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, he influenced a lot of people. I know for sure he influenced Ken Kelly and Greg Higgins. I mean, he, he really, like, they looked at his stuff. I mean, look at the lettering. I mean, all this mm -hmm. stuff. I can get nerdy on this, but I think <laughs> that's another story in itself because this this stuff is just, like, so unique. And, of course, I always put the Danny with the three dots, three dots. to this day. You know, yeah, that, that started in early, early, uh, probably middle school, the three dots. Yeah? <laughs> I was doing it a long time ago. You know why? For Zeta. The, the whole thing, with the three. Notice every letter is three. Uh -huh. yeah, well, it's not there, but it was generally three three lines. Uh-huh. Wow. See, even little meanings in that. This is yeah, yeah. so good. Stuff I had no idea about. No. I yeah. mean, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Well, uh, I just want to thank you again, Danny. Thank for you. Your time. And, thank you, uh, Chad. You know, I, I hope that this uh, spawns more oral history uh, yeah. this time. Let's get oral, buddy. Um, we totally <laughs> should oral oh! out on this. Oral <laughs> Roberts. Um, and thank you very much, Chucko, for thank allowing you, us, uh, us, hosting us at your oh, house. Oh, and, uh, being a part anytime, of it. Anytime. Tell your wife we're sorry. I am. No, she's stoked. <laughs>